Yeah, so so pay, hygiene and property predominantly affects young adults and they have a long time to live with their kidneys if they're going to avoid kidney failure. And the treatments that we have available at the moment really are not up to uh, being able to prevent kidney failure in the lifetime of our patients. And the treatments I'm talking about that we had available up until a year or so ago were essentially renin angiotensin system inhibitors, general blood pressure control, and systemic glucocorticoids. Now that's changed over the last couple of years. We now have the introduction of Nethicon and we have the introduction of Sparsentan. And both of those drugs have been shown to slow the rate of loss of kidney function in a much more effective way than what we've had for the last 30 years. So it's great news for patients. We're not there yet. We still need to work harder to prevent kidney failure in the lifetime of our patients, but we are making good progress. So Sparsentan is a dual endothelin angiotensin receptor blocker. So it is a drug that blocks signaling through two different pathways within the body and particularly within the kidney and the diseased kidney. It blocks signaling through the renin angiotensin system and it also blocks signaling through the endothelial system. And we know both of those pathways, independent of one another, promote and accelerate loss of kidney function. And so for the first time, we're able to block not only the renin angiotensin system, but also the endothelial system. And the PROTECT trial shows what benefit we can get by adding endothelium receptor blockade on top of blockade of the renin angiotensin system. Yeah, so as I say, the PROTECT study tested whether Sparsentan, so blocking a, the um, renin angiotensin system and the endothelial system was better than just blocking the renin angiotensin system alone. And what we saw was very clear evidence that blocking the endothelial system significantly increases the proteinuria reduction we're, we can see. And over the two years of the study saw that it protected against loss of kidney function. Kidney function still deteriorated, but at a much slower rate than on a renin angiotensin system inhibitor alone. So what we can see here is that combining those two approaches really does protect the kidneys in IgA nephropathy against that incessant decline towards kidney failure. Well, I think the new label which says that you are able to use this drug in any patient you suspect of being at risk of progressive loss of kidney function is fantastic. Because actually, if we make a diagnosis of IgA nephropathy, by definition, they are at risk of progressive kidney function. So I think this drug, along with Nephicon, along with the other agents that we're using, are going to be used far more commonly. And I think are going to be, we're going to have to think of a reason why not to use Sparsentam in patients with IgA nephropathy because of the clear benefit above and beyond blocking the renin angiotensin system. And I think we're going to see more combination therapy approaches with the goal really to stabilize kidney function in these young adults and prevent them from developing kidney failure. Well, we've recently had the approval of Iptacapam in the United States. So that gives us an opportunity to control glomerular inflammation without all the toxicity of systemic steroids. So that's a great improvement on the care we can give patients. And patients will be very thankful if they can avoid systemic glucocorticoids. And then the likely next drug to get approved is going to be atrocentan, which is an endothelium receptor antagonist by itself. It doesn't have the renin angiotensin system blockade action of sparsentan. So atrocentan you would use in combination with any ACE inhibitor or angiotensin receptor blocker. So again, the data from the ALIGN trial of atrocentan reaffirms the data we saw from PROTECT is that there is significant added value in blocking the endothelial system above and beyond blocking the renin angiotensin system. And uh, that is capable of bringing about greater reduction in proteinuria. And we haven't seen the GFR data yet for the ALIGN trial, so we don't know how that translates to kidney function protection. But I've no reason to suspect it won't look as promising as the Sparsentan data. So having had no drugs approved for the past 50 years in IgA nephropathy, we now have four 
in the space of the last couple of years, which is fantastic. And I would hope we're likely to have a couple more drugs approved each year for the next two or three years. So this is a fantastic time in terms of giving us as clinicians an opportunity to really get on top of this disease. And it's a great time for patients because we may for the first time be able to give them the treatments that mean they will avoid kidney failure in their lifetime.